And welcome to the Totally Shui Podcast, a podcast about the DCAU and whatever the hell else I want it to be about. My name is Mary. My name is Luke. And today, I think we actually have some news to start out with. You, you say that, but we often have news. I mean, it's, it may not be significant news, but we often have things to talk about yeah, in the yeah. little news section. So just a really quick update. You might remember a couple of episodes ago, maybe a couple of months ago now, because uh, I've completely lost track of the passage of time. Um, but I said that there had been a leak saying that McFarlane Toys were going to do a second wave of new Batman Adventures figures consisting of Nightwing, Catwoman, Bane, and the Joker. The new oh, Batman gosh. Adventures Joker. That's why I put it out of my mind. But they're available to order now from a bunch of retailers. So um, McFarlane Toys directly, Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, I think they're on Amazon as well. Uh, Is that for the US them. and the UK or just the US for the Amazon? Uh, for Amazon, it's just the US, I mm -hmm. think, as as is often the case with um, uh, McFarlane Toys. But they also come with replica animation cells, which are quite cool. Why you want to pick on me? <laughs> yeah, so the, the one from, for Bane is from Over the Edge. Um, the Catwoman and Nightwing cells are from uh, You Scratch My Back. Ooh. And the Joker cell is from Joker's Millions. Mm. So that's cool. Interesting. Order those if you are into that sort of thing. I know some of you are, like Lowell Lucas Jr. He's very much into his action figures. As he's shown us on the uh, the Serum Lake Listeners Facebook group. Ooh. Saw his picture of his wall of action yeah. figures. And it rivals my own. I don't actually have a wall. I put all of my stuff in, in really useful boxes and stack it from floor to ceiling. They're actually called really useful boxes. Yes, that is the brand name. Yeah, we're not being sponsored. No, we're I not. I mean, but hey, really useful boxes. Yeah. We're here. <laughs> yeah, if any, any really useful boxes uh, staff are listening, hit us up for a sponsorship deal. <laughs> Lol. Uh, um, anyway, that's that's basically the news. But you, are these the ones that you can get at Target as well? Or I think you can get them at Target yeah, as well. I remember looking at some figures like, God, was it in the summertime we tried to order some um, through one of those... Um, what are they called when you order something from like the mail routine? Yeah, mail or postbox yeah. services. It's yeah. kind of like a VPN for <laughs> for packages, essentially. Yeah. Um, and it just, it wouldn't let us for some reason, but I think it was because it was a pre order rather than. Well, it was also because it's Target and they've got set limits, and yet they still leave the pre orders open even when they surpass their set. Limits. Okay, I love you. Okay, I love you, but I will have nothing bad said about Target. So you it's too late. Your, I've already said it. You better watch your mouth. Target's rubbish. <clears throat> Excuse. I was in one recently, and they don't understand how the alphabet works. I... Like they have their, their, their sections labelled by letters in the alphabet, so you, you would think A follows B follows C follows D, <laughs> etc. This target I went to, it went A, B, R. <laughs> C was miles away. You will not... You will not talk bad about Target. I just did. It's too late. Anyway, Target is great. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's let's Target. Let's move on. <laughs> Target is great. So, the topic of today's episode is dun 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 dun. dun. Robin. Robin. Yeah, so we're going to talk about <laughs> Robin. If you're not all sick of hearing about him already, because I've done a bunch of videos about Dick Grayson being Robin, and then one about him being mm -hmm. Nightwing, and just now I've had a video go live about Tim Drake in the DC Animated Universe. I thought, based on most of your feedback, people would be really interested in these videos, but I have to say they've massively underperformed. And it's not so much because of the, the subject matter or uh, the thumbnails, it's just people are less interested in that topic. Funnily enough, though, audience retention is very high, so... Those of you that are engaging are paying attention to most of it, which is nice, I suppose. Um, kind of trailing off in my thought process. There. I'm sorry, I was thinking about something else. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. But anyway, basically, what I was trying to get at is you might be sick of hearing about Robin by now, but uh, this will be the last thing for a while. Thoughts on Robin? In terms of not just in the DCAU, what are your thoughts on Robin? I, in generally, mm -hmm. I don't like Robin. Um, actually, this might be controversial. I don't mind Damian Wayne Robin. He's um, some fans view him as being obnoxious and um, just generally unlikable. But anyway, this is getting off track. We're talking about DCAU. This is an episode of Flipside where we talk about whatever the hell else you want to talk about. 
So I'm going to put a little plug in here, as I have done since I started this a couple of weeks ago. If you look up Mary Susan Mears on YouTube, you can see my podcast, which admittedly has had Luke on there a few times, every time. <laughs> Uh, it's got the flip side. And I, at the moment, I am talking about X-Men 97. That was a, a very good plug there, yes. <laughs> Luke is kind of annoyed with me because I'm in a bit of a silly mood today. Mm. <laughs> and I keep giggling. Well, why don't we just talk about what do you think about Robin before I get to DCAU, Robin? Oh, uh, this is my, uh, that's the, the Robin that I know is the DCAU Robin. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, other than the Teen Titans one, which I love and hate at the same time. <laughs> I think that's what you're supposed to. I actually adore that character. <laughs> like, I really Teen Titans do. Go or Teen Titans? Sorry, Teen Titans Go. Mm. Oh, don't tell Big Mikey P. He hates Teen Titans oh, Go. Oh, no! Humorless Big oh. Mikey P. Where is your sense of humor? <laughs> I love Big Mikey P. But I think Robin is very needed for the character of Batman and Bruce Wayne. I think Robin is needed in order for him to feel whole. But do I like Robin? TBD. I'm going to counter that that thought process mm -hmm. by saying look at episodes like Heart of Ice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two-Face Part 1 and Part 2, mm -hmm. Joker's Favor. Basically, all of these excellent episodes that show Batman to be a well-rounded and agreeable character, mm -hmm. full of compassion for his enemies. No Robin in sight, and he's not missed. He's not needed. He is completely unnecessary. He's a cynical inclusion by executives to try and lure the kid market, which, admittedly, when he was introduced in the comics, it worked. He was the first ever child sidekick and sales of the Batman comics, I think they doubled, might even be more than that, after Robin was introduced. So from that, we had a whole wealth of other child sidekicks added to superheroes. So Captain America had Bucky, um, Aquaman had Aqualad and Green Arrow had Speedy and Wonder Woman had Wonder Girl. Um, who I, else was there? I will Kid say, Flash. I will say that... Growing up with Batman the Animated Series, I think there was a day in 1993, maybe 1994, where I saw, uh, it, I don't even know what comic it was, like, I can't be specific with it, but there was a comic in my house and I saw Robin in there and I was like, oh my God, I could be a sidekick. Hmm. I just need to be adopted. By the way, I ha I didn't need to be adopted. <laughs> My family was still alive, but I thought, I was like, you know what? I have to be adopted. I need to join the circus, and I'm going to be a sidekick. None of those things ever happened. No. But I felt on that particular day, it needed to happen. Does anybody else get those things where they have, like, one day dreams and goals, and then it's like, never? They're called flights of fancy. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's That's a nice thing. Like brief things that you intensely feel you need and then suddenly they're gone and you're just like, oh yeah, so I don't need that. me wanting to be a sidekick like Robin was a flight of fancy. I'd say so, yeah. That's the name yeah. of my autobiography. Yeah. And I just want to say that when I did a poll about, <laughs> about Batman the Animated Series, whether Robin was necessary or not, a lot of the commenters seemed to misunderstand the assignment. I wasn't talking about it in the comic books. The amount of people going on, oh, you should read A Lonely Place of Dying. Like, I was reading Batman comics when that first came out, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm very well aware of A Lonely Place of Dying, and actually I don't agree with it. Um, I didn't like the early Tim Drake characterization of, Batman's being mean. He needs Robin. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I nearly well, swore then. <laughs> no, we don't need that. And Tim, go away. Tim Drake's a decent character, though. I will, I will give him that. He's, he's had a long time to develop, but his early initial writing as some whiny little kid was really annoying. And I say that as being a little kid reading that. I was reading this going, who the hell is this kid? Why should I care? Hmm. So I really, whether I like the character or not, I am unsure. Mm. Very unsure. Because I, 
I don't know. I, I, I think it's because when I watched Batman as a kid, I was so excited, like, when I saw Batgirl and everything that I was just so enamored in that, that Robin just completely was like, nah, man, nah. Mm-hmm. Finally, we got a lady <laughs> that's not Wonder Woman. Love Wonder Woman, though, obviously. But uh, it's it's someone that's that's just supposed to be like teenager, early twenties type thing. And it was it was my sort of thing. Like I needed that character, whereas I don't think I needed Robin then. Mm-hmm. But when um, there are some episodes that make the show. And I'm not just talking about just the Batman the Animated Series. There is a very specific movie that helps the the characters in Batman Beyond as well. As you know, Mm. the Tim Drake saga. Yeah. So I think to make Batman whole, and when I say Batman, I'm not just talking about Bruce. I'm talking about the whole character of Batman from beginning to, to, to end. I think Robin was needed and will mm. always be needed because there's that that thing about needing a little bit of him being like a parent or I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that because I'm I'm not a parent, but that feeling of teaching because Bruce wanted to hand down the, you know, the, the, the superhero thing, even though obviously not superhero, but the hero thing. And he wanted to teach somebody that and he wanted to find somebody that had similar, like, oh, my parents are dead too type of thing. I mean, I don't think he wanted to go out and look for that, but that's kind of... That's what he was drawn to. Yeah, he was drawn to that, and that's that's a beautiful thing. But I know you feel differently. Well, look, I, I can agree to a certain extent that, you know, it does add something, but I don't think it's necessarily necessary. And I, I want to say as well that um, to get back to the Batman the Animated Series, mm-hmm. Robin was... Um, they originally weren't going to include him Mm -hmm. or at least they were talking about not including him because they wanted to just do Batman on his own Mm -hmm. initially that's why so many of the episodes have Batman on his own but they agreed okay fine we'll include him Um, but it almost seems like he was included begrudgingly and he was used very sparingly I think he was in like 15 of the first 80 episodes and half the time when he was in the episode, he would end up being incapacitated and just not used for the rest of the episode. Like, oh, he got kidnapped by Ra's al Ghul. Oh, one of the Riddler's thugs pushed a big display on him and hurt his leg. Oh, there was an explosion by the terrible trio and he mm-hmm. he's, his leg's sore, so he's not going to be in the rest of the episode. And how old was Robin? Do you know, did they ever say his exact age? No, but he was in college, so he was like mm-hmm. 19, maybe 20. Yeah. I, I, so I think that... Bringing Robin into Batman the Animated Series was was a good thing because it's a kid show. Or it was made as a kid show. I don't think it's a kid show, but, <laughs> you know, it was a kid show. Yeah. And it brought a little bit of youth in there that maybe executives thought it needed. For me, if Robin wouldn't have been in there and they would have just brought um, people like Batgirl and... Um, People like that, that weren't necessarily... Robin has had the moment in the comics. I know Batgirl's had the moment in the comics. But at that point in time in the 90s, we really just needed some some lady power. With Robin, a college, a white college boy, hmm. um, as a superhero, that kind of saves things sometimes. I'm being too harsh. I feel like I'm being way too harsh. I'm trying to be the devil's advocate in terms of like, we needed Robin, maybe we didn't. But Hmm. at the end of the day, I do think in order to not be so dark and dreary, they they added him. But I don't think that helped with the dark and dreary, if I'm honest. Well, if you think about like the best Robin episodes, really... Mm it's Robin's Reckoning, mm-hmm. and that one is dark Yeah, and that's dreary. what I'm saying. Like, they didn't yeah, get yeah. rid of the dark and, and dreary you know by what? adding him. If, you know what? If you want to add some humour and some lightness and some brevity, that's what Alfred's for. I know. I'm literally, I was Alfred just thinking makes, that. Alfred makes the jokes. Alfred, ever, since his first episode, 
Mm-hmm. You know, he he's there making jokes. Yeah. And so I I just I don't think Robin's necessary. Now, that doesn't mean that people aren't allowed to like him. We all like oh, yeah. different things and that's all fine. And if you love Robin, more power to you. Tell us why in the comments. Oh, believe me, they have. I um love I love that though. But I don't like Robin. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I ever will. The, the 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 thing I wanted to just finish my earlier thought on mm-hmm. about the the mandate mm-hmm. about including Robin is the writers on the first run on Batman the animated series they rarely responded well to mandates so for instance they were mandated to make the penguin look like Danny DeVito's penguin mm-hmm. they were mandated to make Catwoman be blonde and once they were told they had to do something some people on the writing team I don't know who it was I have suspicions but I don't know who it was kind of became a bit disgruntled by it and so they do it but they kind of do low effort stuff Mm -hmm. at least low effort in comparison to say um how they handled characters like two-face or mr freeze or clayface yeah yeah when a firmer mandate was put in place on the new batman adventures that said that pretty much every episode had to have either robin or batgirl the different writing team there actually embraced it now i don't know if it's just bob goodman or Stan Berkowitz, or Rich Fogel. But they were like, yeah, this is an opportunity to tell some good stories about yeah. Robin. And I think that Tim Drake has a better story than Dick Grayson does. Even It's curious, because even though he's in the new Batman Adventures as Nightwing, he's barely used. Mm-hmm. He's in like three episodes, maybe four. So I, I think I prefer Tim Drake. Yeah. Um, the reason why I prefer Tim Drake... I think it's because of how um, how it was the mas- not Mask of the Phantasm was it what was Return it? of the Joker Return of the Joker mm. oh god <laughs> so I I think how that Tim Drake storyline in Return of the Joker I think that is why I like Tim Drake more than Dick Grayson because I thought oh my goodness I'm watching this right now and this again. There is an age that this is supposed to be for. And it's showing a kid basically unaliving uh, a grown man. You can say killing. Oh, okay. I'm so, I'm so used to saying. Yeah. Don't say those <laughs> silly YouTube. Those are yeah. f- those are people that clearly don't understand YouTube's policies. Mm-hmm. They think that, oh, if you said kill, oh, that's it, I'm being monetized. That's not the case at all. If you say you are going to kill someone and you use your platform to mm-hmm. try and encourage someone to be murdered, that's when you get demonetized. That's when you get your suspension. But just talking about a movie saying a character killed another character, mm-hmm. that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. Sorry so, for my rant, but I, I live in this like policy yeah. space. So when that happened, I was like, I like the humor with, with Tim Drake and stuff. But when that happened, it just kind of sealed it for me that I, I liked him over, over Dick Grayson. Well. Because Dick Grayson to me, I hate to say this, but kind of boring. Yeah, in the in the animated series, yeah. yes, he is, yeah. They they do a much better job with him in the comics. I've heard, I, yeah. Although I still don't really care. Um, but for me, the the Tim Drake story that sealed the deal was Growing Pains. Oh, oh, that one breaks my heart every time. Yeah. Every time that scene towards the end where Annie's running away and Robin's mm-hmm. trying to hold Clayface back, but Clayface is going to kill him easily. Yeah, and you see Annie make the conscious decision to turn around, come back, and dive into Clayface brings tears to my eyes every mm-hmm. time every time i have to edit it into a video i'll just get a little tear out of my eye and go oh this is oh, terrible terrible yeah. business and i love it for that you were going to say something no i was just agreeing with you because that's it's it's moments like that with the tim drake character that you just i don't think you could have with dick grayson <laughs> he's saying that there is one moment with dick grayson mm-hmm. that kind of makes me feel sad um, and that's in Robin's Reckoning when he's leaving the circus and he says goodbye to the elephant and the elephant feels oh, sad. No. Oh, and I'm no. like, oh, that poor elephant. <laughs> I've just watched this kid's parents die and I'm just like, oh, yeah, to hell with you, Dick Grayson. But that poor elephant. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> that says something about me. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I, I, I like Tim Drake more. Yeah. Do I, did, do I think they needed two Robins? Yes. Yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I think 
two completely different characters, in my opinion. Yeah, of course. The same character, but two completely different ways of of playing that character. And yeah. again, I'm going to say this, and I say this every time I talk about about this show, probably every podcast, the voice actors were great. Um, and they did a really great job of not, well, in my opinion, not trying to, they were their own Robins. Yes. Yeah. And you just kind of reminded me there that one of the problems that some fans have with Tim Drake, or they say they have mm-hmm. with this version of Tim Drake, is that he's not very much like the comic book Tim Drake. He's Tim Drake in name only. But he's not supposed to be. Is well, he? well, I think he he's he is much more similar to Jason Todd, who was you know people re- keep going on about oh he was massively unpopular when he was Robin oh everyone hated him which isn't true the 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 reason they say that is because there was that death in the family phone poll where you could vote whether Robin lived or Robin died and um, the people that selected die won. But they only won by, I think it was something like a couple of dozen calls. Mm -hmm. It was that close. So I wouldn't say that Jason Todd was unpopular. And also look at how popular he is when he was resurrected as Red Hood. He's fairly popular now, I'd say. Um, How funny. I mean, I'm getting off topic here. But how funny was it in the 80s and 90s that they would do that, like, call in or, like, yeah. mail in your vote for this this character and that character? How funny would that be now? Well, they do sometimes do polls, like online polls. Or, oh, really? Or they'll do a social media poll, won't they, where you go on their post and click yes or no. Rigged. Yeah, well, that's what Elon Musk does with his policies, or Rigged. at least he did for a while, until the policy decision didn't go his way, and then he pulled that and was like, no, we're not doing that. No, what poll? <laughs> what happened? What's going on? But that's another matter. But yeah, like the 80s and 90s, especially when, when um, you know, you had comic book characters and TV characters, and they would be like, who do you want to die? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, oh, now we can see what character people like and what, which ones they don't. Yeah, yeah, the things they did before social media, right? Yeah, I didn't. Um, I guess it's because I don't follow a lot of stuff anymore <clears throat> on mm-hmm. social media that I'm like, oh, I just want all the Robins to live. I just want them to go off to college, to graduate, to go on to Harvard or Stanford or Trinity College in Ireland, and just be fancy, lovely people. Well, it's funny you mention all of the Robins because there is a final DCAU Robin mm-hmm. who appeared in the Batman Adventures Continue comic. And I know there are people who will be writing comics going, it's not continuity, it's not, I hate it. Rah, 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 rah. Well, this is my podcast and I can mention whatever I want. I'm sorry to tell you this, but it is in continuity because Alan Burnett, the mastermind of the DCAU, said that this is what he would have done had they continued with the new Batman Adventures and didn't move on to batman beyond and paul dini also said yeah this is what we were planning on doing or what we had talked about doing Mm -hmm. because he went back to his old notebooks and the first story arc in there involved jason todd jason todd who is so similar to their tim drake that you just kind of find yourself wondering what was the point of doing that if he's so similar were they the same around the same age as well no no so uh because i've not read this comic no you haven't jason todd was older he was um, he was selected as Robin shortly after Dick Grayson left, mm-hmm. uh, and he was a member of a street gang, some orphan kid. Oh, street gangs! Yeah. This the is Red Hoods. So nineties. Yeah, yeah. When did this come out? Only a couple of years ago. Oh my god! Yeah. But um, Batman took him in and trained him and hoped mm-hmm. to channel his negative energy into something positive. But Jason was incredibly ruthless and violent. He pushed the penguin out of a helicopter, uh, needing the penguin to have surgery, which is why he looks different in the new Batman adventures and why he lost all that weight. He absolutely brutalized uh, the Scarecrow, which is one of the reasons why the Scarecrow had to have his new costume made. I just wrote a note saying, read this. Mm -hmm. I am loving Jason Todd. <laughs> yes, and uh, he, in one panel, he like shoots his um, the bat grapple thing through Man Bat's wing to try oh, and bring him down. Yeah. So you know he's he's way too violent, way too angry. But he still reminds you of Tim Drake. <laughs> yeah, because of the the backstory in terms yeah. of being an, an orphan child living on their own. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it's yeah, the similarities there. Yeah, the similarity is there, and. 
the thing is that he went after the Joker, which was a big mistake because the Joker beat the tar out of him and almost killed him. But he didn't quite kill him. But by this point, Jason had decided to leave and go off on his own. And he comes back years later when Tim Drake is Robin. And he... It's it's a bit ambiguous at first. Like, he's just spying on them, on the Bat family. Mm-hmm. Um, but by the end of the story, it's clear that he wants to take down Batman. Because he's angry about how everything went down with the Joker. No. no. Yeah. I need to... Re- I'm going to read this. Yeah, you can. I'll, I'll load it up on, yeah. on, on a device and you can read it if you want. Cool. But, um, yeah, I mean, I agree that the Jason Todd backstory is very similar to Tim Drake's. uh, But what that tells me is that Batman is a sucker for, like, orphans and abandoned children because that's what he identifies as. So, of course, he's going to be drawn to people like that and want to help people like that. Um, And I have to be completely honest, I don't love the first season of Batman Adventures Continue. um, But... You know, Alan Burnett and Paul Dini wrote it. They say it's part of the continuity. It's part of the continuity. You have to accept that. Same with the Batman and Harley Quinn movie. I know I've opened an awful can of worms there, but it's true. Bruce Tim says it's part of the same storyline, the same continuity. Then it is, even if we that, don't like it. I? Yeah, I mean, there's... I like, well, the animation and stuff, the storyline, I mean, I could go here or there with it. Yeah, but... I mean, there's only really one mm-hmm. scene in that movie that I really take issue with, and that's the smells like discipline scene, you know, where Harley's just farting in the Batmobile. Oh, that was God. Just, it, was, it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. It was intended to be funny, but mm-hmm. it wasn't funny. It went on for way too long. It could have been a really short joke. Yeah, it could have just been a very short joke yeah. if they wanted to include it. I don't even hate the the musical scene where they go to the henchman bar and you see all of those uh, classic henchmen there. Like you can see. I didn't mind that. I kind of liked it. Yeah, like you see <laughs> Two Faces henchman Min and Max singing up on stage, mm-hmm. and there's even Captain Clown dancing with Randa Dwayne. Because I thought it was really funny, and yeah. I thought it was. I don't. Know, it was kind of fresh. It, it was nice. I'm glad the whole movie wasn't like that. but um, It was a, to a certain extent, but yeah, I know what you mean. I, I really liked that that particular scene, but that's also my jam. Mm-hmm. Like, I love stuff like that. Yeah. Um, intentional things like that. Um, yeah. But that's a topic for another time. We've mm-hmm. gone off topic, really. Anyways. Um, so, this has been all over the place. That's I know, how much, I know. I'm just going to say this because I'm glad this happened. Because this is not the first time that I spoke about Robin to Luke and it ended up on a different thing. Yeah. And I just <laughs> want to tell you guys that because that is just how it goes. I mean, that's when I talk about Robin, it always ends up talking about other characters where I'm uh, trying to relate Robin to another character or I'm saying, oh, but I like this character more or Mm -hmm. this character could have been in more episodes than than Robin or whatever, even though Robin wasn't in as many episodes. That's what kind of conversation I end on with Robin. So I don't mind Robin. I'm, I'm glad that the character of Bruce had that, you know, um, Dick Grayson and Tim Drake. Um, it was all right for the storyline, but I do think that it brought a little bit of youth to it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, we could have had another series. Like, you know how like they have the Batman? Mm-hmm. It could have been something like that, that had a, it was a bit more um, not as dark. A bit more... Uh... I describe it as being toyetic because of the designs of the characters looking like they were all action figures. Mm-hmm. And they, they were designed with like action figure um, features in yeah. mind. You, know, like you could squeeze the Bane figure and it goes... Because really if you want to make an action figure, make a, make a new show that you want to do action figures for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I hope I don't make people mad by with my opinion on Robin because uh, it's not really do, an but... opinion. It's it's kind of it sounds like the BS answer, but I don't hate Robin, but it's still TBD on whether I actually like Robin. I like the character of Tim Drake, mm-hmm. and I love um, how the end of Tim Drake's Robin came. Mm-hmm. 
But I feel like if Tim Drake, Robin, had its own cartoon, had their own cartoon, it would have been so much cooler. Maybe. Maybe. I guess that's what my whole thing is. I just wish they would have made a Robin cartoon. I think they were going to at one point, or they were exploring it. Because it it would have been great to have a 90s version of Tim, Teen Titans. Yeah. Go, Teen Titans Go. Or Ooh. Teen Titans. <laughs> well, you've not watched all of Teen Titans, but um, that is uh, a very Robin-centric show. Yeah, but if that would have been in the 90s when this show was, it would have been... I mean, the storylines could have been still similar, but it could have been... It, in my opinion, it could have been cooler because it was like a 90s cartoon. And that's my opinion. And I think we should get to the comments now. <laughs> yeah, well, just one final thought, just to kind of put an exclamation yeah. point. Exclamation point? A full stop, let's put it that mm-hmm. way. But um, So Robin was included in the new Batman adventures to allow them to tell different types of stories. So they're not every single episode was growing pains. You'd have episodes like Beware the Creeper or Critters that were a bit more inspired by the 60s Batman show. And Robin was obviously massively prominent on that. Um, And if you didn't have those lighthearted shows, I think then the excellent, really dark ones like Growing Pains Mm. and Mad Love probably wouldn't shine as brightly. So... I think perhaps the the last thing to say, the final, final thing. Robin, not the shiniest star, but you might be able to see him from a telescope. (laughs) Robin is the ugly friend you bring with you so that you look more handsome. (laughs) (gasps) Oh my goodness. I don't have any ugly friends. I haven't got any friends. (laughs) (laughs) Shut up. No. All right, let's get to the comments and don't listen to my husband. Quickly to go through the comments then. So new person. Hello, new person. You have a username I can't actually say, but it's user hyphen GJ9UQ3KB7Y. I don't know how you would pronounce that. Um, you said that on the subject of the late Mr. Kent, which was our last episode, mm-hmm. said the original story is very good. The late Mr. Kent is an adaptation of an episode of the Old Adventures of Superman series from the 50s. Five Minutes to Doom, it's called. The first episode of the two. I was really shocked when I saw it for the first time. Thank okay. You. Never knew that. I've never that's, really watched it. That's awesome. And thank you, by the way, for answering uh, Big Mikey P's question. Yeah. Speaking of Big Michael P. Woo! One Big Michael Andre Parlon, he's Honestly, here. I always wait for Big Monkey P because I know that one, I'm gonna have, I might have some recommendations <laughs> on what to watch next, and two, he's gonna bring up a subject or topic. Well, those are the same things that I forgot to talk about. Yes. So let's get going. Michael Andre Parlon says, "Just watching this after finally catching up with a Crisis on Two Earths rewatch." Time and circumstance had to make me busy enough to not see it sooner. Continuing on to JLU. Also finished on the first season of Ojo Manjo Doremi while moving on to Sharp. Don't care a huge bit about multiverses, both in personal gamer perspective and in high stakes multiversal plot enjoyer perspective. Oh, and if possible, I'd rather play a cooperative style team character between Bonnie Bell Bubblegum and Marceline Abadia stick out tongue and clumsily brush his head a la Yoriko Nikaido Nikaido yeah I don't know if I said that right I was saying that because there's a brush company um, a makeup brush company called um, Haikyodo and there's that thing on there so I'm probably wrong but whatever I may be misremembering but boy I think the late Mr. Kent sure becomes more effective in my mind after possibly simultaneously watching or reading Stephen King's The Green Mile back in the day great story that Controversial of me to say this, but I don't get the gist of being against the death penalties. Sure, I understand why they can be grossly abused and become a bit overkill, but even I think it's absolutely necessary as World War II saturated bombing and the American Civil War's Union march to the sea. Same goes for Allied UN interventionalism against rogue states like Panama and Iraq pre-21st century. Typical how the broken masquerade is undone by death or amnesia. Still better than amphibia's frog evasion is a hoax nonsense. Narration episodes are nice, but I would rather prefer more animated storylines focusing on first-person perspective. Can understand why people wanted Detective Bowman to have appeared in more than one episode and maybe a Superman Adventures tie-in comic issue or two before this one, though. 
That's the thing about humans. Even if we know we are fighting a nigh invincible boy in blue stupidity, we simply just can't give up too easily. Rather, we just keep firing at him so to release the stressful anger there or whatever. So what do you guys think of the Punisher in Spider-Man the Animated Series? Non-lethal he may be there, but he seems still cool far as I remember. No, I thought he absolutely sucked with his battle van and, and uh, what was his name, Micro. Uh, Micro! set a battle van to shoot homing missiles at the man spider. It was awful. Absolutely. You tried to do it. the American accent. No, I was, try- I was doing a mocking but, version of the Punisher. But, but you said missiles rather than missile. Oh, excuse me. So we'll work on that. Yeah, all right, fine. Giving <laughs> myself away. Uh, people really shouldn't be quoting Watchmen's Rorschach too much. Great character, but he gets way too overrated by certain folk. And that was the intention with that Rorschach quote, by the way. Gotta hand it to Berkowitz, his DCAU works seem to be not too anvilicious. I don't actually know that word, so I'll have to look it up later on. Body cams are nothing to me. No, we need a God's eye akin to otherwise debatable Fast and Furious movies. Also, in a fictional note, elite psychics a la Minority Report and Babylon 5 with a secret omniscient being gaslighting on a simple job like being a librarian in charge of the entire world with no one suspecting, not even the security system themselves. Good old parents, the Kents, they're among the likes of the Amamis, Gao Gai Ga, help the loving raising an unusual baby given to them by a giant robot lion, Furukawa's clan ad, seriously they never had many worrisome qualms against their son-in-law Tomoya and their grandchild Ushio after their daughter Nagisa, well the, the Weasleys, Say what anyone will against Harry Potter stuff. Please do not badmouth these good fictional folk. And even Hind Doofenshmirtz. Schmirtz? I'm not sure. Not that his ex-wife Charlene is terrible. It's just we don't see her do much on screen when it comes to being animated show parents. I am 100% convinced you are just plucking names out of the air to try and make it <laughs> difficult for me to say them. And you're succeeding. I'm tripping over my tongue so much. Keep doing it. No, Stop. <laughs> Uh, Scooby-Doo has its gems but I can still sympathise if you two deem the franchise with vindictiveness not un- not unlike me with Power Rangers One Piece and Robert Rodriguez stuff stop, like Spy stop, Kids stop stop My, Big Mikey P you know how much I love you I actually genuinely see you as a friend but we will not have anybody and I mean anybody saying anything good about Scooby-Doo with this household no I'm sorry <laughs> Scooby-Doo is terrible. I know it's not intended for adults to watch, but even as a child, I felt like that show insulted my intelligence. The characters showed no learning, no development. It was practically the same thing every single time. Uh, I remember being like six or seven years old and going, look, I figured this out. Why can't these adults? What the hell's wrong with them? I hate this show. And it was on all the time. Drove me crazy. Anyway, uh, where was I? Okay, wishing your Welsh musical luck, Screenwiper. Uh, at 40 minutes and 23 seconds, understandable after all. Card captor Sakura has the usual teacher student romances, though the main one never went anywhere in the end because the teacher fell in love with the titular character's good big brother. 43 minutes and 12 seconds, not weird at all in my perspective. Keep it, please. Don't mind the absence of Constantine in the DCAU. So, will a possible episode 22 for Flipside be about Two Face? That's a good idea. Mm, the secret. episode the lost episode oh my god that'll be about tommy lee joe no aaron eckhart of course that was the joke we made wasn't Mm -hmm. it uh anyway 45 minutes and 53 seconds i'm a back oh criff you mispronounced oja manjo again look at this point it's oja manjo all right that's that's just how i'm gonna say it i I might actually start abbreviating some of these these terms just going (laughs) something i can't say moving on (laughs) You're right with purple magical lasses like Twilight, Sparkle, Mary, but the likes of Wandering Commoner, Fern are the exception, though there's the semi-royal like Onpu Sagawa, the famed child idol. Gal's quite a charmingly done witch child character, despite her selfish first impressions. 47 minutes, uh, 45 seconds. You made me gurgle a bit there. Also, I'm not I'm really not testing you, though. I wouldn't mind you learning. <laughs> I Shut up. I am learning. <laughs> Peter Cushing really deserved that holy funeral. Hope England gets the same farewell. 49 minutes and 14 seconds. Look the characters up. Their hairstyles are easily worth noting upon. Renting museum pieces is nice and all, but the currency better not be actual money. No, rather it be a fervent, irreversible loyalty to certain ideals and morales from which ignoring or violating them would prove to be problematic. Apologies if that sounded condescendingly vague. My mind's a jumble for the time. I think your mind is perfect. 
Funny, you could have just looked up on your Google and not Pinterest. Still, you do you, Mary. Uh, 53 minutes and 18. Helps that the comic is unarguably part of the animated cartoon by word of its creators. I look at... I look for things on Pinterest for everything because I the thing about Pinterest is I I'm not one of those people where I have to have safe search on I'm pretty sure it is on (laughs) by default but there are some things that I am trying not to see um so that's why I I go on Pinterest a lot of the time because it's not it's not showing me things I don't want to see yet Continuing Michael's comment, I'm on the home run now. <laughs> 53 minutes and 18 seconds helps that the comic is unarguably part of the animated canon by the words of its creators. I think I just said that already. <laughs> 54 minutes and 37 seconds. Really don't like it when my expectations don't bear fruit. 56 minutes and 5 seconds. Good news, I've also refinished War of the Worlds and even Charles Dickens' Hard Times. Bad news, no word on Little Women, said the Lord of the Rings with... Lots of addendums should suffice for now. 56 minutes and 19 seconds. No, it's not. It's as uncontested as Sabre Sabre being said the same way. That does not work in, in spoken word. 57 minutes and 8 seconds. Sabra. <laughs> Sabra. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to hear the examples. Uh, the Breakfast at Tiffany's 2. Sorry, we'll say Slander Against the Go cartoon. A similarly named tie-in comics for the original series, on the other hand. Yeah, we covered this earlier, Michael. Where is your sense of humour? I'm sorry, but two Titans go should get an emmy if, uh, does it not have an emmy i don't know it's i know it has won awards i think it's hilarious but anyway. i love it it's it's one of it's one of my favorite things when i'm having a super hard time even at the age of i <laughs> could watch it and actually feel lifted so uh, dc should do a multiversal defense force angle and bonus if they've hinted to be suddenly in interfering even to non-DC stuff like Star Wars and the SCP mythos. So it was Stur... 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 What is that? Stur... 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 <laughs> also, the first three Lestat novels are greater than Twilight for me. Not sure I can recommend Earth's Mightiest Heroes, though. Well, thank you for your comment, Michael, uh, as ever. We'll move on to the next person. Oh, the Lestat novels are brilliant. <clears throat> I actually... Those are ones that I would like to have in hardback form if I can find them. This is a, a future note to myself, by the way, because I love the Interview with the Vampire series and I wish, wish they would have done a Tom Cruise list out movie. Belmont underscore GR. Hello, Belmont. How are you doing? I like the late Mr. Kent episode a lot. I would prefer it if we didn't have the action scene with the helicopter, but having the detective explain the motive for the murder. Maybe he just wanted to mug her. Maybe they intentionally left out his motives for us to fill in the blanks ourselves. I don't think it was about money, because otherwise he wouldn't have left the jewellery for his, his, uh, his sucker to take the fall for him. Uh, continuing Belmont's comment what's wrong with Scooby-Doo I love all the Scooby gang and all the cliche things they, that happen to them is part of the charm I think we mentioned this earlier but I really hated it I felt like that show really insulted my intelligence as a kid it made me angry because it was on all the time as well it was on like every morning every morning I remember it being on and I would turn on the TV to see what was on see Scooby-Doo and groan groan anyway each to their own Next, we have a new commenter, I believe, called Cyborg2254, hello Cyborg, who asks, how is the Punisher a villain? Well, first of all, he murders people. That's pretty villainous. I don't know if you've been keeping up with uh, the more recent Marvel comics. Admittedly, I dropped off a few years ago, but the Punisher was a member of The Hand, the evil assassins. I mean, I think that should tell you enough right there. And also, if you're reading any of um, my favourite Punisher comics are like Punisher Max by Garth Ennis. But if you read any of those, he is undeniably a monster. You could say he's an anti-hero because he targets his violence towards criminals. But Garth Ennis makes it very clear that the Punisher is a psychopath and that if his family hadn't been killed, he possibly would have ended up harming them. The Punisher was originally intended as a Spider-Man villain as well. But, you know, he was very popular during the 90s in that anti-hero phase of comic books. 
uh, but he's never been particularly heroic. There have been times where they have tried to make him a hero, like when he briefly wore Captain America's costume, but that dirty great skull on his chest and it being a symbol that is adopted by unpleasant people kind of gets in the way of that. But hopefully that answers your question. So moving on, play content. Hello, play content. How are you doing? Hey, play content. Mixie's debut is my favourite Superman episode just because it arguably involves more typical Superman story traits being subverted. But gee willikers, the late Mr. Kent is a very close second and probably the one DCAU episode I think most people could find some appeal in, regardless of their stance on Superman or animation or Superman animation. Superman animation. That's a good term. Matt Ryan is the Constantine actor. Lots of people love him in the role, but I can't help feel mildly jealous. So few DC characters can be played as sounding vaguely Welsh. And then when one who can be played that way is introduced, I'm still not cast. There's always hope, Connor. Keep keep dreaming. My fingers and toes are crossed for you. <laughs> Next we have David Carney. Hello, David. Hi, David. For a kid show, this episode has some darkness in it. Oh, yeah. But Stan Berkowitz's writing, for me, shines. A light on a serious matter. That is a good thing, in my opinion. Yet another great podcast. Hope you both have a great week. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I will have a great week, I think. I'm going to have an okay week. It's going to be a week. <laughs> De Fuxa. Hello, De Fuxa again. Uh, question. Do you think BTAS would have benefited from having the actual second Robin show up in it? Or what he would eventually come to be. So this is what we talked about yeah, with Jason Todd. I think that would have been phenomenal. Um, but yeah, uh, given that Tim Drake was so similar, I don't think he was necessary, frankly. Um, but, you know, making him as an adult Red Hood, I suppose that is kind of interesting. And, you know, we've got it now through Batman Adventures Continue, if you want to go with it. So user, oh, it's this guy again with the unpronounceable name. He's left a bunch of comments, but just very quickly. Uh, he questions why we say that Superman is rarely a detective. He's a journalist, which is basically the same thing. No, it's not. It can be, but... There, there's an element of it, but it's it's not the same thing as a policeman. Because he's got, because like, a journalist... Actually, you want to know something? I just... I can see what he's saying. Yeah, I still I disagree. I, I still I, disagree, yeah. but I can see what I can see what they're saying. Sorry, I'm saying he. I apologize. I'm gonna say they, um, but I um, I can see what they're talking about. Yeah, but he goes on to say, if you want more Detective Superman, watch the '50s show. Uh, oh Adventures yeah, of Superman. definitely. So yeah, fine. Uh, and he also closes off by saying, Scooby Doo is great. Can you ban him? Yeah, banned forever. Just get out. I just I I know. I'm just kidding. I'm fan you. Yeah, I know. It's fine. We all like different things. It's okay. I'm only joking. Mm -hmm. uh, Lowell Lucas Jr. Hello, Lowell Lucas Jr. Hello. So with the Kids WB, they were allowed to showcase more topics than Fox Kids execs were hesitant to allow. So a wrongfully accused black man on death row versus the forgotten in BTAS, the innuendos with Joker and Harley, rev up your Harley, making ha-ha, try some of her pie, etc. And even Batman bleeding in mul multiple episodes versus the one episode on Leather Wings were able to get away with more. Kind of gave Warner Brothers an edge versus Fox. No wonder Spectacular Spider-Man ended up on the channel too. He also says that Clark, maybe Clark has a personality disorder. He did say he'd go mad if he was Superman 24-7. So when he went to Detective Soups, he thought he was Batman. It worked out as Robin got his help when beating Bane and the other rogues. Yes, that was a good episode in Nighttime. Uh, called Nighttime, excuse me. Uh, next commenter, I believe is a new commenter. Apologies if you've uh, been on here before and I've just forgotten. Forgive me, I'm becoming old now. Yes, he is. Uh... Commenter Time Lord Victorious. Hello. As, as Hello. We just said that, didn't we? There we go. Perfect example of me forgetting what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a fan of Scooby-Doo, but I know the animation was not the best. That is very true. The animation was See, I don't poor. care about the animation. Oh. It's the fact that Senator Kelly was the uh, the ghost the entire time in every episode. Senator Kelly. I think you'll find he's President Kelly now in X-Men. <laughs> oh, my God. Is Mystique... Every Scooby-Doo villain. 
potentially. <laughs> Does that mean they're ripping her face off every time they pull the mask off? Because yes. that would be very unpleasant. Like an onion. Uh, anyway, Zemox. Hello, Zemox. You've returned. And Hello. he says, I love the late Mr. Kent. It was a great noir tale. And the ending sent chills down my spine. I do wish Bowman had more appearances before the late Mr. Kent. It would have made the episode much stronger. The fact that a black man was framed for a crime he did not commit is very relevant and hits hard, especially considering the world we live in now. I would argue that it's the world we've all lived in for a long time. But yes, you, you're still correct. Uh, since you're talking about Robin, I have one question. How do you think the DCAU would have handled the Teen Titans and their relationship with Robin? Um, it's interesting because it, I don't recall most of the uh, other sidekicks existing. Like There was no Wonder Girl as far as I recall. Um, Aqualad, they weren't there. Uh, Speedy, he was in He was in Justice League Unlimited. So, so far, the Teen Titans consists of Robin and Speedy. Mm. You could make it... There, there was the, the Kid Flash costume in the museum as well, wasn't there, in, in one of those Justice League episodes. So mm -hmm. that's three. I think they probably would have just introduced those characters or made some new ones. Uh, a little bit like when... They did the pilot, like, test footage for Justice League, and they included some different characters, like uh, a female cyborg. Um, I assume that she would have been in that as well. Um, but, I, I, you know, I, I don't think there's any reason why uh, Teen Titans couldn't exist in the DCAU. It's just we didn't really see them. Thoughts, Mary? None. None, yeah. I can tell you're getting a bit low energy now. It's That's just my thoughts <clears throat> in general about anything and everything other than the things I worry about. Hmm. None. <laughs> I worry about way too much. Okay, the last comment, and it is the longest comment we have ever received. A dubious <laughs> honour. And it goes to not Big Mikey P. I'm sorry, you're now second biggest Mikey P. You know what? Big Mikey P, you... You've got some competition here. <laughs> yes, here we go. We have the Phantasm who says, Today is a very important subject matter with the existence of Robin and by extension the Bat family and Batman's life, and one that quite frankly fills me with an immense sense of wanting to groan whenever someone makes or tries to make an argument of no, Batman's better on his own. He's better as a loner. And neglect the, re and, and neglect the reality that Batman has had Robin longer than not and even longer, even Alfred and May say that they want Alfred to stay, even though when Alfred appeared in the comics years after Robin did, he had zero emotional meaning or anything that made him essential. He was just there to be a bumbling butler named Alfred Beagle and wouldn't actually have anything in common with the version of the character we know today for decades later. Unlike Robin, who was Batman's partner and a surrogate son pretty much since the beginning, and it wasn't too long that the father-son between them was emphasised more. Yes, one of the reasons for Robin's creation was to bring in young readers and to give Batman someone to bounce off of, but it's certainly better than why they initially introduced Alfred, and both characters have given so much more development since then. Dick was way more so than Alfred. It's something that I think has aged quite poorly, and I can't express how eagerly I'm looking forward to it becoming a relic of the past, as it seems to be. Now, given how crucial he is, I will mainly talk about Dick Grayson, but I will also bring up more when needed. There's already enough people who have said things like Robin brings out Batman's humanity and compassion, which are absolutely true and essential, but I wanted to dive deeper into that. To me, the single most compelling part of Batman's story, and in a lost of ways, uh, well, in a lot of ways, the point of the character is the one of healing, true healing. Throughout the character's history, that he have been many ways to deal with trauma and accepting that it's okay to actually have a life after something that may have changed the course of your life forever. And nothing is bigger evidence of this than Robin and following him, the Bat family. When Bruce decides to take Dick in, he makes a conscious decision to make sure that his life isn't dictated by his loss like his was. And to also be there for him in a way Bruce never had. Yes, Alfred was rewritten to have raised Bruce decades after he was introduced. But even then, he couldn't relate to his trauma and the need for justice burning within his soul. Robin is Batman's redemption, far more so than fighting crime in Gotham. He sees a child ready to go down the same path he chose in his age and instead gives him a new path, and it worked. Dick is free from the curse Batman bestowed upon his own self, the curse of vengeance that he believed was the reason he would never have a happy life, and it makes him question if that is something that was ever necessary to begin with. Dick gets who he wants to be, and not who he believes he must be. 
It's also as if a piece of Bruce is instilled within Dick, a piece that is no longer burdened with guilt or with his promise. The best parts of him are passed on to the sum. There is another piece to this puzzle, though, one that is an immense significance. That is, of course, fatherhood. Fatherhood, understandingly, understandably, is an overwhelmingly transformative thing in life, one that I currently do not relate to as I'm not a father, but one that I am looking forward to experiencing if that point in my life ever comes. Batman and Robin represent one of the greatest greatest examples of found family in media, and through them meeting, they are able to make each other's lives better. This changes everything. This is now a Batman who has a son to be proud of and a family to love again. People who make him smile and feel happy and reminding him that despite everything, at the end, it's all going to be okay as long as they have each other. A Batman who undergoes through the process of fatherhood is one that, through that, allows himself to no longer be a man forever depressed, believing that there is nothing moving forward other than the mission, but a calm and collected father. The life of Batman before Robin is very much essential and deserves to be explored, but eventually there comes a point where, without him, Batman as a character just feels stuck, going through a never-ending cycle like a snake swallowing its own tail. Like Tim Drake said, Batman needs Robin. Let me make this clear, that does not mean that every Batman story has to have Robin there, just like not every Robin story needs to have Batman there. But if Batman at no point in his life had Robin, then Batman never gets a chance to move forward. I like that. It's not finished. No, I know, but I like that point, though, because obviously we, we think about so many different things, but I never really thought about him being complete in that way because of Robin. One of the many great qualities that make Dick Grayson so special is that his character has so much more depth and substance than simply what he means to the other character, in this case Batman. He represents one of the biggest rarities in the history of comic books, which is that of true character evolution in the years since his debut, and he is one of the only major comic book characters to have truly grown up in front of readers. As of this year, Dick has been Nightwing for 40 years, and in a short amount of time he will have been Nightwing longer than he had been Robin which is almost unheard of, and get the character has endured and has only become more beloved. I presume that means and yet. Dick Grayson, a lot like Superman, represents the true heart and soul of the DC Universe. There is a purity about Dick Grayson, a purity that doesn't exist in his mentor, whether he is Dick Grayson, Robin Nightwing, Batman, let's forget about Rick Grayson, or any of these personalities, he remains the same person. There is no separation. Instead of lingering in the darkness, Dick moved on and celebrated his parents' lives. He formed relationships, became a true leader, and devoted his life to helping others out of the kindness of his heart. He has coped with the trauma of his parents' death. Ever since Batman and Alfred took him in, he's been healing and caring, caringly guided by the two father figures. There isn't any rage that festers inside of him. There's no darkness, and Dick Grayson is the light. He is the emotional available. He is willing to trust others without deep inside him thinking the worst no matter what situation he is in. At times, his heart rivals even Superman with its aptitude for goodness. And to continue the following, I stated that Dick is the light and this extends to him actually being able to form relationships. Nearly everyone Dick meets has become acquainted with almost as if the charm is his hidden superpower. One of the most important relationships in Dick's, Dick Grayson's life has been with Barbara Gordon. The evolution from best friends in their youth through a rekindled love when they were older found them playing off each other's personalities. Through the ups and downs of their relationship, Barbara has always remained the voice of reason in Dick's life. Whether or not they're dating, Babs can be relied on to have his back. They know each other better than anyone else, and the type of trust and synergy they share is hard to find in life. The other most noteworthy relationship in his life is with Corey, Starfire. Their bond helped them both mature as people, and even though I generally prefer to view them as college exes who are still good friends, especially since I find his relationship with Barbara so engaging I'm loving how it currently progresses in the comics, Dick is also in a unique position where he has earned and is able to command the respect each and every member of the Bat family and is able to bring out their emotion. He knows what makes them tick and only lifts his brothers up. Jason had huge shoes to fill, but he is now at the point where he can call Dick his brother. Tim was Robin when Bruce was at his most vulnerable, being the protege that followed after Jason's death. But at every turn, every question he had about the job, Dick was there to lend a helping hand to be a big brother to the young Robin, mentoring him and guiding him for life in and out of the costume. Dick was able to guide Tim to somewhat understanding Batman, in my opinion, being the perfect Robin. As for Damien, Dick was Damien's Batman, 
and for a narratively significant part of his life. Dick was the first one to really get through the cold and tough heart that he had learned to build when he was raised. He was able to give Damien what he needed the most, reassurance and love. He gave him respect as an equal. Dick was openly able to tell Damien when he was proud of him or that he was smart. Under the shadow of Batman, expectation can be so heavy, but Dick was always there to lift that weight off their shoulders and to tell them that they were doing a great job, to tell them that they were worthy. That's the unrelenting kindness that Dick has. That's his charm, his ability to deeply understand others and their needs and ultimately what makes Bruce so proud of him. Dick is what Batman aspires to be like. He has the ability to trust others and ask for help. Look at the people he's been able to help. Dick is who he is because of the bonds he's created and that's who Bruce probably would have been had he been able to move on. But again, Bruce is so proud of his sons for what he's become. To all the Robins, Dick is the gold standard for that each of them looked towards. Someone who's compassionate and kind, but also strong and assertive, a true leader. Through everything after Dick resented Batman for not treating him like an equal, Bruce sees Dick as someone who can be even better hero than he can if he wants to. That is the highest praise coming from Bruce Wayne. Dick Grayson is only human, yet he is more heroic than most superheroes. And that's why Dick has earned the reputation of Batman's greatest success. A notion that, quite frankly, I find unbearably idiotic is that Batman only creates Robins to create an army of crime-fighting children. This such garbage and is stupendously ludicrous, unless you're talking about the utterly insanity and abhorrent writing of Frank Miller's all-star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, which has rightfully earned its infamous reputation and is left in the past. Is it completely realistic for an underage crime-fighting partner? No, but since when has realism actually mattered when it comes to the Batman mythos? It doesn't have to be realistic, just believable, which it has been too many times to count. I mean, how is fighting a man who falls in the vat of acid and instead of his body dissolving, it turns bleach white and his hair green, or a man with a genetic condition that makes him look like a crocodile and has super strength, or someone that is an actual fountain of youth, and that's not even scratching the surface of Batman's world, not to mention the rest of the DC universe. One of the worst examples of the opposite happening is 23-year-old Chris O'Donnell playing Dick Grayson and being adopted by a 34-year-old Val Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> Zero sense of a father and son relationship, and then the Nolan movies just thought they were being clever with John Blake. But in reality, they weren't even trying which is indicative of the entire trilogy feeling like they were partly ashamed to be adapted from comic books. Here's hoping the future of Robin in live action fares better. My voice is absolutely breaking. This comment is far too long. <coughs> but I'm going to finish. <laughs> In regards to specifically the DCAU Batman, the concept of a mission eventually overwhelming him is something that, in my opinion, absolutely applies to this depiction of the character, because while as far as his life is presented in BTAS, it does show more of his kind-hearted nature, it is significant to note that the view of his life we get in BTAS is very limited when taking into consideration his entire life and full character journey that he takes in his life post BTAS all the way up to Batman Beyond. When the rift between Dick and Bruce starts to take a more prominent shape, Batman's demeanour and personality has become more cold and emotionally neglectful, which is something that I have always believed had been the outcome of many years of fighting Gotham's criminals taking a toll on Batman, and as a result he becomes more detached and his mind was starting to become solely focused on the mission, and Dick leaving was the final straw. That started to change when he encountered Tim Drake and let him in his life, and once, ba and once again was reminded what Batman was meant to stand for and would be better from that point on. It also harkens back to what I said earlier about Tim Drake's comic book origins of when he approached Dick and Bruce and told them that Batman needs Robin. The DCAU Batman would also come to further realise that he was not in fact in this alone by working with Superman and eventually the Justice League where he bonded with them in his own Batman way in order for him to grow. That is something that he had to be reminded of one final time in his life after having disowned the legacy of Batman after one of the worst experiences of his life when he had to use a gun to get out of a near-death experience. And that was when he met another young man that fate seemed to have led him to. A young man that he would one day help become the world's next Batman, Terry McGuinness. I really love that as a character arc for him. That's what I had to say on the matter. Now I'm asking Mary if she can please not let this be the final time the dear reader of this comment talks about Robin or any member of the Bat family. That doesn't mean you have to change your opinion about them, but maybe you can, maybe not, leave them in the sidelines. I love talking about the Bat family, and this will not be the last time we talk about Robin. Yes, it will. I need water. No, my be. voice. My poor voice. <laughs> no, because I think that although I have a certain opinion, which is kind of like... It's an odd opinion, 
because I I say I don't like Robin sometimes, but then, you know, I think today I've realized, eh, I don't think he's neither here nor there with me. But I do think that he is a an important part of the uh, the DCAU universe well, and the Bat universe. Well, you touched on a point there that kind of sums up my opinion, and that is that Terry McGuinness is a much better Robin slash Nightwing than uh, Dick Grayson was, or uh, and he said Jason Todd then <laughs> Tim Drake. Uh, Terry McGuinness gets my thumbs up. The well, others. Terry has Bruce's DNA. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, all right. What a perfect point to end on. Terry McGuinness, thumbs up. Tim Drake, thumbs in the middle. No. Dick Grayson, thumbs down. Boo. This will not be the last you hear of Robin on this podcast. <laughs> this DCAU podcast, by the way, and all that stuff you said about the comic books, while it applies to the comics, it does not apply to the DCAU. Yeah. So. Next time on Totally Shui, we I don't have a specific thing I want to talk about, but here in the UK and a few other countries around the world, it's Pride Month, one of my favorite months out of the year, because it celebrates so many beautiful people around the world and myself. So I would like to talk about... LGBTQ plus characters, creators, mm. and voice actors. Thank you so much for the comments. I know Luke jokes around about how long they are, but I just want to thank you. My voice. <laughs> My joking. voice. But we really do appreciate that because you took your time out of your day to write that. And honestly, I I am so honored that you gave that time to us and you shared it with the rest of the, the classroom. I'm, I'm imposing a 500 character limit on comments from you now on. You shut up. <laughs> you tell Luke to shut up in the comments. <laughs> and I'll like all of them. Yeah, just, just, just keep it at 500 characters. No, please. don't listen to him. You can do it as much as you want. Um, and I want you guys to have a wonderful time. And if you don't remember, you can always message me I don't know if you can message Luke, but you can message me. I'm fine. Some of them do. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But yeah, have a really wonderful time. And remember, you might be having a bad day. Guess what? Me too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Have I, a great I will, day. I will take that message to my grave. <laughs> Hold it close to my heart. <laughs> Quote on Pinterest. <laughs> it's going to go on my headstone. <laughs> you might be having a bad day. Dot, dot, dot. Me too. <laughs> But no, um, great thoughts to all of you and good vibes. Ciao.